Hey, Rube comes up and clap when they leave, okay? All right, uh, Olympic gold medal team. To our app. It's called Olympic Gold. Um, really excited to tell you about this because I was motivated by it. As you can tell, I'm pretty sweaty because I biked here. And uh, this app inspired me to get physically active, just looking at all the great athletes that have been out there in the world. Um, so um, our Olympic Games have always been difficult to track. I don't know if you've seen it um, or tried to keep track of certain events that don't typically get shown. But as an app, we try to make it um, easier for people to find the events that they're interested in. Um, individuals are typically forced to watch an event they're not interested in, or having to listen to commentary instead of actually watching the event itself, uh, just having to sit there and listen to commentators talk. Um, this is true for people who are viewing at home, but also for those who are attending the Olympics. Sometimes they can get lost in the shuffle, can't keep up with all the different things going on. Um, generally, uh, general uh, specifics are explained by commentators and pundits to draw attention to certain events, uh, but the size and scope of the Olympics is way too large. So what this app tries to do is to condense those things, make it easy to read, and fun to use So while, we get, while you gather information. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring it over to Brian here. So, wait, so okay. pretty much Olympic Gold is an app that gives individuals the freedom to retrieve information about the Olympics. So basically, you know, dating back from 18, 1888 until present. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much like a one-stop shop for people who are attending the Olympics or people who are just watching from home. So um, it also, uh, we will use uh, real-time real stats as well, um, which is a, the most powerful feature in our application. So I, I guess for like the future Olympics, it will be real-time, so it'll be updated as soon as you know, it happens for the future games. So. That's pretty much it for this slide. Yeah, so pretty much uh, the app itself, uh, you guys can read. Um, we have an app that's available. You want to pull that up real quick? The biggest challenge, I'd say, of this app was actually the data because there is no live API for Olympic historical data. So we had to retrieve uh, data from a comma separated Excel file, which is awesome. And we had to do a couple of different approaches. We had um, a data set, we're using Firebase, we're making multiple API calls, but the best part was somehow we had to tell the database what the person wanted to find first. So we put that comma separated file into a JSON file, and this is a dependent, why don't you pull up the games real quick. Um, <clears throat> so we have a list of games here that the user, that the user can select from. Um, let me just pick a new one. And then from there, the app understands what games are a part of that. Uh, I'm sorry, what sports are a part of that games because we didn't want to pull in winter games for a summer uh, selection. So they're aware of each other and they're related. Um, handball was really popular. Um, and then within handball, there's different variations of that men's, women's. There might be a team component, there might be individual. Um, <clears throat> we just about anything. So women's, men's, handball. <clears throat> and then on submit, what we're doing is we're making a call uh, out to our database, and then it goes back into our comma separated file and it does some more stuff. Um, so why don't you go ahead and hit search, and we're able to retrieve um, results. And we're going to talk about the search database call. So on the uh, search call, um, we're saving that into Firebase, so that we can come here to our second page. Out of those uh, values, the games, the event, and the sport, we then are going to parse through a uh, data, our common separate value sheet, which um, is approximately 30,000 different individual rows, and be able to pull out in that year what team, in this case we're looking at handball, so um, Denmark won the gold medal in that Olympics, and return all that. If we scroll down, 
we're then able to also make some API calls out of all that to pull in the a blurb from Wikipedia about the that particular Olympic Games. While I'm scrolling down there, we're able to pull up a map from Google Maps and you scroll down. And we're also able to pull the weather using the Google Maps API, the Weather API, and the Wiki API to be able to pull together data that would be relevant to the to a person that is looking up those games. Um, as we alluded to, we really like to be able to be real time um, in uh, 2020 for Tokyo so that we're able to not only display the previous year's winners but also pull up um, data about where that particular event is going to be held. So instead of just a generic map, go to a pin map. So you can say if you're looking up beach volleyball, we can go ahead and pin and say beach volleyball is going to be held at this location in, uh, in Tokyo. Um, as well as tying back into a live, real-time API that would have all the appropriate uh, current data. And just show me some more. There's a beach volleyball. There's a beach volleyball. <clears throat> so beach volleyball, for example. So this is beach volleyball. is a uh, two-person sport. So we have uh, both winners from both gold medal winners for Brazil, the silver from Spain, and the bronze from Switzerland. Shown for the, which one did we go to? 2004 uh, games. Seven questions. So, yeah, just a couple. Oh, uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you ended up using the three APIs. Uh, that's, that's awesome. And you said you had to, to kind of Besides your own data, make your own data. So what, what, what did that process look like? Sure, certainly. So uh, we started off looking for APIs that had Olympic data, and we couldn't. We found a couple, but we couldn't get keys for them. So I found a compensated very value sheet that listed every single athlete that had participated in the Olympic Games from the beginning until uh, 2018, which was uh, 271,000 did some trimming and working with that since we're only really looking for uh, medal winners. And then we had to start parsing that. So we used a JavaScript called pop parse, which goes through and will take that commerce separate value sheet and turn it into a JSON object that we can then call through JavaScript to pull out the pieces of data that we're looking for. And from there, I had to take that out because mine could not uh, be retrieved as objects. It had to be individual objects that I'm able to call. So uh, I turned basically uh, Nathan's source file into a JSON file that has an ID and a parent ID and then a main value. And then I make calls there on click. Each time someone selects something, it reruns and retrieves um, the sports. And then on click, it, re it returns uh, the events that are relevant to that sport that games. And then on click, we start running the next uh, set of and I didn't get a chance to see. Is it responsive? Is it, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, so that, that's one of the things that was part of the goals was to make it so that it was nice and responsive so that <clears throat> on my phone I could sit there and plug this information in and retrieve it. And that was the key behind it, though, is that it mobile ready for people at the games currently. Yeah. Um, so you could potentially add maybe a search feature to it. So if you're you heard like a name of maybe a um, Olympic swimmer, and you're like, I wonder Good. what events they've competed in, and those kind of things. You could just give them a name, right? Sort of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that, what, yeah. What are some features uh, outside of what you mentioned the real time? Uh, what are some other features that you guys can see as far as making future enhancements? Uh, let me go back to the. Yeah, definitely um, at the results page, clicking into each individual participant and finding out more about that person and what else they've done. Um, maybe when you click into it, making a call to YouTube about that actual event uh, and then presenting that game or that, that specific event where they won the medal. Embedded video. Yeah, online. embedded video, something like that. Um, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, any other questions, guys? Awesome. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Oh, I just want to make sure everyone 
is that your surveys? <coughs> Oh, and then, uh, yeah, also, uh, please do the forms while the presentations are going on, guys, because um, that's important. Um, okay, so Top Tracks team. Where's the Top Tracks team? Yeah, Chris. They're up. Yeah. All right, guys, let's talk about Top Tracks. <laughs> The last cup had a lot of zero. Well, I'm sure. All right, welcome everyone. Um, so we are uh, team Top Tracks, I guess. We got renamed. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, our, our app is World Music Charts, um, and uh, we are. We kind of took our idea. We um, a lot, a lot of our our group, you know, tends to enjoy music a lot. So um, one of the one of the things we were uh, when we were going through this this project, we uh, we were thinking of how we can incorporate music in our in, in this project, and so um, we um, had the idea of uh, right away. You know, when we thought think of music, you either think of iTunes or Spotify, um, and so um, we've talked about Spotify's API. So we thought, yeah, let's let's try and use that, and so um, so. Basically, our our app, app will um, give you the um, Spotify's charts information, and um, uh, Spotify has they take the top fifty charts for each country, and so we kind of um, revolve around that. So um, our app will actually um, we will talk more more about the functionality of it, but uh, basically um, it will give you a um, a, a nice uh, Ten uh, top ten uh, tracks for each country, um, represented in Spotify anyway, um, and um, we also incorporated uh, Google Maps API. Um, so it will also show um, it will also show uh, Google Map um, of where that country is. So, in case you don't know, Trevor, you want to? Yeah, in case you don't know, or if you want to <laughs> search around. So, so I'll talk a little bit about our, the concept of our app. Our target audience is music lovers, travel enthusiasts, um, or anybody who likes to tinker with cool apps that give you cool information. And um, so the problem we were addressing is lack of awareness of the musical aspect of a country's culture. And so the solution is to provide a data snapshot of a country's collective popular music preferences from which one can gain perspective of a nation's culture. And so the user inputs a destination, a uh, country in this case, and uh, the, the data is drawn into the Google Maps and Spotify API. A map is displayed of the country and then the top 10 songs from that Spotify country is displayed. Yeah. So do we want to maybe go through a little bit? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, we'll sure. Yeah. All right, let's we'll give you a demo of our, of our, of our awesome app. All right. Okay. Uh, so this is what it looks like, um, the title. So we have, so this, we have the, you can put in a first name, last name, that feeds into like tracking in, uh, in our Firebase database and there's field validation on all of these fields. And then initially this was a, um, this was like a, a text field, but then we realized that um, 
it'd be very it'd be very time consuming for us to have field validation on spelling case and you can type anything you want into a text field and so we and, and then also a limitation that we found was that spotify only captures um like country specific data they don't make public like city specific so that's we did so and then they only track like what 62 countries yeah. so we had, so we just created a pick list or drop down list where you can select the country that it will return results and it's a uh, so instead of having to validate what the user types we just let them pick and then once you hit submit it um drops a pin hit it again drops a pin, um, <laughs> and then it'll um, pull up the, pull up the song, the song, yeah, that's what they're called. And I think, did you say Ariana Grande comes up a lot? Yeah. One of Trevor's uh, favorite artists. <laughs> so, and then, uh, and then of course, um, we got a play button, um, so if you want to sample that song, you can, um, you can play that song um, to, to sample it, but yeah. So a um, couple challenges, I don't know if we, uh, so a um, couple challenges that we ran into was, uh, of course, interfacing with the APIs. Um, I, have, uh, I, I was uh, working on a lot of the Spotify's, uh, uh, the API, and um, it's particular, um, if you haven't dealt with any um, OAuth or authorization, you know, with to tokens in your APIs, daunting um and also having uh, refreshing those uh, those tokens as well so um, i had to have a lot of help with that um as well as uh um, trying to query exact data so those countries those 62 countries um kind of type those out myself into an, uh, its own object so um because i just couldn't parse that data um, so um robert you ran into some issues yeah and i i ran into issues with initializing and interacting with the google maps api just because they initialize it how you would initialize a, a library, so like Ajax or Bootstrap or something like that. And then you have you can call specific functions. And for initially, when I first started, I was treating it, I was trying to use Ajax where it was only pulling back one result, so it was a very dynamic. And the um, having to double click is having to is kind of since we had to incorporate Ajax somehow, it's it's using Ajax to update a global function. It's, Ajax is calling the Google API to get the coordinates to drop the pin, and then passing that in um, to the to the Google API like kind of map function where it changes where how the map is displayed. So there's always a delay. Um, so I try to call the function twice, and that works like 95% of the time. And I can't figure out why it doesn't work the other 5%, so it's double click, so tap tap. <coughs> then we could talk about just a little bit of our kind of design process. So, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. We just kind of decided on which APIs we're going to use. And like I said, we were leaning towards music, and there were some other ideas, but. We figured um, Spotify would work pretty well. Um, we kind of ran with that. Um, there were a few glitches, like uh, Levi mentioned, but uh, we kind of went for, uh, we didn't use any apps to develop our front end. We just kind of went on paper. <laughs> well, old school, just drew it out on graph paper, went from there, uh, did a bunch of research on the APIs, and Levi and Robert uh, did that. Uh, me and Trevor uh, decided to uh, go up front with work on front end. We did that. Uh, we actually started with Bootstrap, then we decided to try and materialize. Um, it's actually very similar. Um, so that seemed to work out pretty well. Um, very, very intuitive, I would say. It wasn't really crazy differences or anything like that. Um, and just our probably. Probably spent what, the last class class some time and a half just debugging yeah. mainly. I just little things that would come up, and uh, so we, but it seems to be working. 
except for that double click issue, <laughs> which seems to be excluding <laughs> us. Uh, but yeah, the rest, the rest seems to be working. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk about some future things that we're thinking to incorporate as well. Yeah, we're very low on time. So, so if oh. people had questions. Oh, sorry. yeah. So yeah, there's, um, well, just quickly, yeah, some of the some of the uh, future stuff. You know, we want to um, expand it to cities. Um, we want to maybe include, um, you know, if, you to, if there are events in that uh, in that country or city. So it's kind of some of some of the things we want to expand on. So, any uh, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so so I think again, uh, yeah, it looks really awesome. Um, some of the future things I think would be really cool to be able to compare like two cities that were close to each other and feel like their lists. Um, one thing I really wanted to see was a sample of the sound. Is that working? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> this one. Yes. Um, Is there any uh, Ariana in there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, under the wire. <laughs> we got it at sixteen percent. Beer, beer. Do you have a question? Oh, I was just gonna add. <laughs> oh. Good evening, everyone. We are Musical Spork. We have myself, third Peter, we have David, and then Boss Julia. <laughs> Next slide. We are inspired uh, to do it on music because Julia went on to uh, GitHub and in the repository, uh, it populated Musical Spork as the first name. So we took that and we we're inspired to make some, some type of app based on music. So we saw Music Match, we saw YouTube, and we put that together to think of, um, and you guys have heard of an earworm. So when you're driving in the car, let's say, you listen to a new song, it's a really good song, it's got a good beat, and then it sticks with you that night, into the next day, into the following day. You're like, man, what is that song? And you know the lyrics, but that's all you know. So our idea is to find a solution for that. You type in a few lyrics, and then it will, well, I'll get into the process later, but you type in the lyrics, and what you get back is you find the song, you can then click on that, uh, on the button, and then you can view the YouTube video for that song. And then next, we'll talk about the design. Yeah, so we looked at uh, various mu music APIs. We looked at Spotify, decided not to go with them, but, um, but well, we want to do definitely want to do a lyric search. So music match was just a great choice for us. Couple that with the YouTube. Everyone listens to music on YouTube. It's a really quick and easy way to find a music video. So we decided to combine something like that into uh, like more of a uh, uh, user interface where they type in some lyrics, uses the music match API, get some results, show them in a list, and then you can choose from there. It's like, yep, this is the one that I think that I, I, I need, that I heard, stuck in my, in my head. And so then we use a modal to pop up and uh, show the music video that the user has clicked on. 
and we also have a Firebase backend to show what are people searching for, what is hot right now, what are people uh, kind of in the field. You can see then what other people have searched for. Uh, we decided to use Materialize uh, instead of Bootstrap. We wanted to try to do something a little bit different here, break away from the from the norm a little bit, and uh, so we kind of. Had some ideas as to well, there's no John Buck around, but we can use cards still to, to uh, display the uh, various elements on the page and then uh, use the model to pop up and show the YouTube video. And we, uh, I and uh, Eric were working on the front end, Julia and David were working on the back end, and I will uh, turn it over to them. Yeah, so I um did the work to integrate with uh, Music Match. So um, using Ajax, be able to call their API based on input from the user. Um, for the most part, it was great. Uh, one challenge I had just with their API is that Music Match seems to be kind of a community-driven site. And so the lyrics that they have are from people like you and me taking our time to put lyrics in. So what you think might be there isn't there. But <laughs> other than that, it went really well. Uh, I started diving into the uh, Google Docs on how to use the uh, Google API. That was a real struggle. Um, uh, I believe we came to the sort of conclusion that they have their own SD, uh, SDK that they like to push on uh, the users. And so we tried looking at nowhere in the uh, Google Docs is there something about uh, using the Ajax method to pull up data. It's all using various uh, uh, stuff that we are not familiar with. So I don't know if it was the, similar with uh, Google Maps, but uh, it was really hard to navigate the Google documents, Google's documentation. Uh, oh, also other challenges. So um, I think us just getting used to using Get as a team, so we didn't step on each other. That was challenge number one. Challenge number two, um, I had crazy amount of problems with the cores issue. Chris saved two the day. thumbs up, way. Yeah, go, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I showed up on Saturday. My laptop had uninstalled VS Code just through Windows Update, and then I got that reinstalled, and then I had a cores issue again, and then Chris fixed that, and and then I was able to get to work. So cores was a huge win for the game, but. Yeah, I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> we so one thing, one thing that I think that we ex figured out as we kept having blocking issues, we found ways to work through them so we weren't blocked. So like the biggest thing when I couldn't call Music Match because of uh, the course issue, I just kind of I knew what the data looked like. I had the response, so I hard coded an array of what that looked like, and then we could continue to work on the front end and um, do other things. So just kind of being able to be like, okay, I'm stuck here, but what can I do to work on a different piece? That was critical. All right, I think it's time to demo a couple of jumping tasks. It works. <laughs> demo time. Look <laughs> <laughs> oh, how mobile that is. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So this is it. Musical score. Um, so here's kind of the recent searches that Peter talked about, so you can kind of see what your friends are looking at. Um, kind of this. So this is my back to us from <laughs> Firebase. Uh, I have it limited, or we have it limited to just kind of show the last five, and then it keeps adding as you're actively using the tool. Um, speaking of earworms. <laughs> yeah. So the other really fun thing about YouTube is that they say that you can play music outside of YouTube.com, but really you can't. So based on a bunch of query parameters, it looks like you'll be able to embed uh, a video uh, outside of their site and play it, and it works nice. And, it, and so at first you um, 
I had this linked up where we get like the normal like Pink Swan or whoever sings Baby Shark, um, and you get their music video and you click play, and then it's unavailable, video unavailable. And the reason that is is because of licensing and stuff like that. So I have this um, query for Creative Common license types, and so we get some weird results. But here's I mean, it works. <laughs> A little unexpected. <laughs> I believe today is the first day of spring, so let me check up my I get the point. Um, <laughs> but rather than like pressing the other. There it is. Frozen. Or whatever this is. But it's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Let it go. All right. uh, oh, you're right. We also have a secret feature. <laughs> <laughs> you play videos and then you can insert your own sound effects too. Because yeah. everyone loves gold screens. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. Awesome. David. All right. So, um, so uh, the biggest uh, the biggest issue with YouTube, which we discovered. Um, uh, at about the 10th hour was uh, the licensure sure issues and we uh, so the videos we were loading when we got YouTube to work uh, you were not playable and so uh, because of because of that we ended up using the Creative Commons ish uh, the Creative Commons videos and that sort of uh, to be honest defeats the purpose of the app and so we thought it would be funny to include this little legalese. Uh, after careful consideration, resources dedicated to this project will be redirected to other initiatives. We would encourage you to follow our organization. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, we're um, we're looking forward to uh, using these skills for projects two and three. Uh, but uh, this, uh, yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Oh, not you. No. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, great job. That's awesome. I, I was thinking it'd be cool to almost sell it at the fact that it's a Creative Commons license. they be like, that's that's why it's crazy as fun because you won't know what you're going to get. Like, uh, I'm thinking it's a song, but how does that fit into it? Yeah. Uh -huh. but, so, yeah, yeah. Maybe you have a question. Yeah. yeah maybe there's a. That's a good save. Yeah, I did find like a grandpa's doing that MC camp. <laughs> 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 I just, you know, sometimes you think like that. Crisis, you shouldn't have your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, awesome, great job. Um, so, you know, um, what was your biggest, I mean, outside of the core industry that we ran into it, you know, and, and, and connecting with YouTube in that sense, um, I guess, what would have been your, your your next step if you had like two more weeks to work on like if you couldn't do youtube and you're like look we have to find another <coughs> thing to use what, what would have been your direction we would probably would have looked into spotify yeah. a little more to see if we could pull music back that way um i think other ideas we had we thought about like trying to use like firebase as a solution for users so letting users grading or register a user and let them authenticate save stuff <coughs> like that Seemed like a cool way to incorporate Firebase into the project, um, and like uh, more ways to search. So Music Match has um, you can search by artist, you can search by song, you can search by all of them at once, or lyrics because we only implement the lyrics. Sure, that's that's cool. Um, so yeah, another thing. So you're you're the first group that we've seen actually implemented uh, Firebase in a way that has like these are recent searches. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I think another way to do that would be maybe for all of them to do like a pop popular searches or something right. where yeah. you, you know go okay this is like the most you know, five most popular yeah in their life. Yeah. 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 Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. <laughs>
readers, future planners. All right, guys, this is book readers. Trying to, trying to be on camera. Yeah, yeah. This is a reminder. Oh, yeah, so just, no, far side doesn't work. Hi, uh, we're books listed. Um, I'm Peter, Ben, Chris, Adana. That's our team. Um, so, why did we do this? Uh, um, well, there you go. Um, the summary uh, we wanted to build an app for um, a quick, simple app for people who really like books, who wanna, uh, who wanna keep up on current books. Um, uh, right away we found that the, the best API for getting this, obviously, is uh, the New York Times bestsellers list. Um, the great thing about it is they have 55 different bestseller lists. I did not know that. It's uh, some crazy lists like from I don't know how you say it, manga, 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 manga. manga. to uh, indigenous Americans, um, crime and punishment, science, all sorts of different topics. So um, if you're super interested in science, you can go and you can pick a look at the um, top 10 list from, it's actually 15, but from all the way back, I think we found about 2000 or 2001, you can go back and look at all of the per month or even per week if they're weekly. I think science would be like weekly, but uh, the top 10 bestsellers were weekly. Science might be monthly. Um, the reason our, uh, we wanted to do this because it's, uh, I personally love reading. And I like to keep up and follow what's going on. I don't read all of the stuff that's put out, but <laughs> I like to know what's going on. And you know, if my favorite author pops up, I can read them. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, yeah, so who the audience is, uh, basically book lovers, book sellers, librarians, anybody who really um, is interested in books and keeping up on current current books. Yeah, and uh, this app that we built is really uh, super simple and easy to, to use. Um, and I'd like to then now turn it over to our design. Yeah, so basically we wanted to keep the design process really simple, straightforward, um, implement, uh, materialize. I think that was new for all four of us. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually really fun to use besides uh, Bootstrap. Um, we also did a lot of research on APIs like Peter mentioned about the New York Times and Goodreads was the other API. Mm -hmm. So we, once we established that, we went into wireframing So we use Sketch to build these wireframes. Um, this would be the Screen One desktop, and the next one is the mobile version of that. And then Screen Two desktop, and then the Screen Three desktop, and then the mobile for Screen Three is on the right. And the oh, detail. Yep, and that's the detailed one with the, the carousel at the bottom. Um, looks like my grids aren't showing up the greatest, so, but we used the 12 column grid as well um, for that. For the design. For the design, yep. And then here's some uh, mock-ups from two different phones. Uh, I think this is the 7 and the 7 Plus. And then the desktop, or I mean, uh, yeah, desktop version of the design itself. Um, so the technologies we used, um, uh, so what was new for us was Materialize, which sounds like a lot of people used, um, and then we used obviously JavaScript, jQuery, and CSS. Um, the main thing we used from, I think toys we used for Materialize were the auto completer, the date picker, the carousel, and the floating button. Uh, so for the next one, <coughs> or next slide. So for the floating action button, I really liked it because um, 
you see that all the time in apps on your phone. Um, but what was cool is like, we could hide all the options that we have. So I tried to incorporate it that a little bit into the app as far as like going forward and back. Um, the auto completer was nice because it won't um, let you pick a category or enter something that's not of the top or one of the 55 categories. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, the date picker was neat because uh, we could choose a um, period of time. So if we didn't want people to go and pick a, uh, a list from before 2010, we could do that. Um, so there's a lot of different options with that. <clears throat> nice. And then the carousel was my favorite one. It's just fun to move it back and forth. And then it was cool because you could turn it into a button as well and kind of link to the website. I'm gonna show some demos about our project. This is a first page where user can enter any 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 name or category among the 55 lists and pick a list. So, and all the lists are sorted alphabetically. So, if you don't know any, like if you type anything, it will just be by autocomplete, or we can search alphabetically. And we'll be selling any of the like category. Now, user can choose a day. So we can choose any day, day 2001. And now here's a list of the 15, top 15 books the, uh, in the, like we get from the API, the New York Times. And based on the, these list, anybody can click on that and see all those details of the book. So when we click on the list, any one of them, now we get the list, all the details of the book with the published date, writers, and summary of the uh, book and about the writer, if you want to read about it, and also the more book they have written by writer and all the carousel stuff. And if we click on that carousel, we can go to the Goodread uh, uh, website. So, and see all the stuff here also. And we have some uh, this floating button has mentioned earlier. When we click, uh, when we go over here, we can go back to the home base to source or go back to the list base so that we can go more details about other books on that particular categories. <coughs> so what we have planned for the future development of our project is like from the New York Times API, we can get uh, Amazon API. We can go to, uh, get the link of Amazon API and we can make our product, like monetize our product by using Amazon API. If somebody buy using our product to Amazon, we can get some incentive. And we also are planning, uh, like these are all our icebox stuff, like we are planning to use like, database to store the favorite book of the users. And like if somebody wants to share that book to some other people, like they can also share it via emails and all this stuff. And we do some talk about some challenges. Yeah, so you know what? We ran into a lot of same issues that we've already heard before, you know, like the Coors issue. Um, I had to build a little PHP service to go and grab it. Um, go grab the data, uh, and that was, took me, it took us a while. That was a roadblock, and I kept getting my head on the table because it sucked. Um, and then getting the right APIs, there are a ton of really good APIs, but some of them required the OAuth, and that was, was talking about that, that was a super pain in the butt. And so I skipped anything that required authorization. Um, and we found one that worked pretty good, that was the Goodreads, but the problem with that one is, as you saw in that, when you saw the books in the carousel, some were missing covers, a lot of missing data out of the API. I just don't think it's been taken care of. And we didn't have time to find a new one. Um, let's see, oh, and then, yeah, so the one other thing we found, uh, ran into is like, the Goodreads API there, if we passed in a title like the something, it would come back with like 20 different books and it would hard, it would rarely ever be the right book. And so I finally figured out that you pass an ISBN number and you get the right book. And that took a while. That was the last last minute thing. Um, and just like I think everyone else, we ran into a ton of Git issues, just trying to remember what steps we gotta follow to get push, to pull, um, the making sure that we all uh, approved gift or uh, the pull requests was tricky too. Um, 
like some we didn't like to, and then so we had to uh, kind of modify them and kick them back. Um, that was that was kind of cool, but it was still pain in the butt. Um, the one big problem we had on the um, the app was because we're calling API. I kept we kept writing the code in such a way that the the, the functions expected the data instantly, but the API was so damn slow it didn't come through until like a second later. And then all of a sudden everything would fall apart and break and timing would just um, get a lot of empty variables and that was no fun. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. Nope, oh, that's it. That's our project. All right. So uh for questions? Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead and I'll <laughs> um, so the autocomplete, how did you guys get that for? What was the steps for that? That's that was Oh, um, work on. Yeah, so we created uh, an array with all of the 55 topics on it, and then the autocomplete called the array. Um, and so uh, I think it was just a function of materialize, um, like how it would only let you enter the, those, uh, yeah. Like those yeah. categories. Using materialize made it dead easy to yeah. wire it up. It was actually, yeah, it was actually really easy. <laughs> Um, as far as the empty colors showing up with the uh, API, what would have been, if you had more time, what would have been, just out, outside of using a different API, what could have been fixed with the current? Um, well, at first, I was just removing them all the covers that didn't have actual images. But the problem is that then it'd be empty, completely dead empty. Um, and I still wanted to show that we wanted to show the titles to show that there were other books. But we didn't have time to take that title and make it look pretty in that slider thing. So uh, you could potentially just put up like a dummy cover saying something like, you know, no. Yeah, no, they or... did. It did come back with a dummy cover, but the dummy cover, we didn't have time to figure out. Like, it was a generic Goodreads okay. image, their logo, and that doesn't tell you anything about the book. Um, so that's why I swapped that out for the actual uh, text and title. That's and it didn't look very nice, but that's something we would probably want to fix. I was, uh, was going to say, also with your team, what the same thing with the searches, the same like what was it popular linear to search or what was a popular category? Yeah, to search. save, yeah, yeah to save some data. Um, I was really glad you guys mentioned the affiliate mark, affiliate uh, Amazon uh, associates they call it. Uh, that 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 tool that would be really cool to sell directly off the site. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously yeah. you'd have to read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that that um, yeah, yeah. Really, reach out. Any other questions? audience so uh, we were really actually a couple of people in the group are kind of ski snowboard bums and we were talking about um, in concepting stages how cool would it be to kind of have something that can allow you to like find the best snow and, and uh, book a trip and so it's really someone who maybe doesn't live in an area that you know that has mountains uh, but loves to ski or snowboard, uh, is looking for those really good days when they invest in a trip to go out to the mountains. They want good snow. Um, and they're willing to kind of book that on a short notice to, to make sure that they have a good experience there. So um, so this is really a tool for, for those folks. 
<clears throat> and the problem that we wanted to solve is if you're if you're trying to do that, if you're trying to, to book a trip and get the best snow, then you have to Google various snow forecasts and then um, in a separate uh, action Google flights and then check different days and try and figure out, okay, am I going to get in on the right day when the snow hits? And we wanted to bring all of that together and then also have the APIs find this data and bring it together and just present it to the user so they would have that at their fingertips. And different resorts too, because usually it doesn't, you're just following the best snow. So you're kind of, it's an equation. Yeah. So the solution is to have it all in one app to get the user uh, able to see where is the best snow and then from there go to flights and look a flight directly. <clears throat> All right, so this is the ski trip planner, uh, the all-in-one ski or snowboard trip planning destination. Um, so first thing um, to note here, we did restrict it to four top destinations. So basically we're following uh, snowfall, seven day forecast, uh, and looking at what are the top destinations with most snowfall coming in the next seven days. Um, and we, design wise, we wanted to uh, have it be really visually driven and inspiring and get you like kind of pumped up for the for the experience. Um, we incorporated uh, uh, a new library, it's called Chart.js for the um, snowfall predictions. Um, and yeah, and so you get top four resorts in the US uh, and you choose one and proceed. No, okay, yeah. so, so what it's done. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of our tech and challenges throughout the demo. Uh, so what it's doing is it's it's monitoring a large number of ski resorts and then sending out and gathering the next seven days forecast for each of those resorts, bringing that all back, totaling it, and then finding the top four resorts for snowfall. So you see Squaw Valley's got 20 inches this week, Ulta's about 16 and a half, same solitude, Mount Baker's at 15 and a half. Um, and then uh, where Firebase comes into place, so that's using the Dark Sky API. Um, and because there's a large number of ski resorts in the free tier of Dark Sky API limits you to 1,000 calls per day, what we do is we first check if the snow forecast calls have been sent out today, which is a variable kept in Firebase. And if not, it will send out all of the calls. You know, it could be up to 1,000 resorts. Uh, bring them back and then store that in Firebase and store the top four words in Firebase. And anyone who uses the app after that uh, will just instantly pull the top four words from Firebase until the next day. So we can kind of really uh, be conservative with our API usage. And we we do have it pretty much prepped for more if we wanted to. Like So pick a resort. <laughs> okay, so the, it goes to our second page after we pick a resort. Um, here you can put in your air, airport code. Um, I think you could find it either um, by the airport code or the city name, and then um, and then you can select the dates. Uh, the date picker also gives you like an option to view um, two dates. So when you're um, going there and then when you're coming back. Everybody avert your eyes and cover your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it was working earlier. 20 seconds, please. It is supposed to return the cheapest flight. <laughs> wow. 
You want to grab yours? Try a different one. Sorry. Maybe the airport goes down. Try like a different browser, hmm. or you can try it here. So, this was working approximately six minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be there's no flights? Try going further out, yeah. Like starting further out. They're kind of calling. Oh, it did work. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Wi Fi. So, so that will bring up one of our challenges is that Skyscanner API is a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, to his defense, the free tier of Google or the. Yeah. The Google API is $100,000 um, for their flight API. For their lowest tier. Um, there was a number of other flight APIs that you could get by becoming a travel partner sort of thing. Um, so yeah, and I actually had to put together two different a, uh, AJAX calls because um, the data would return as a round trip flight, but it would only have half the flight in it. So it would be the price of a round trip with only the departure information. Um, so yeah, lots of issues with uh, Skyscanner API. Um, but yeah, you get the code and it returns the carrier information, the dates, uh, whether it's direct or not, and then getting the cost of two one-way tickets. Um, and then the book now button will take you to get a flight on the Skyscanner website directly, um, taking in all the information that we pass to it. All right, so really quick steps we took. Um, concept came pretty quickly. Um, I would say we're all kind of sort of came out there, Ben had the idea, and we were like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, researched APIs, um, obviously not super in-depth where we would, you know, encounter or learn about all these issues that we've encountered. We just started working on it. Um, we divided the workload front end, back end, um, brainstormed solutions for different API restrictions. Um, we kind of built the presentation as we went along. Um, and then uh, once we had sort of uh, the APIs working, which each of the guys were sort of working on, on them separately, we started merging the work, uh, debugging, um, which is clearly still in process. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I finalized the presentation and then um, a little bit of user testing. So our tech staff, Stack, um, we use Bootstrap, jQuery, um, JavaScript, uh, the Skyscanner API, Dark Sky API. Um, we use uh, Charts.js, Date Picker, and Moments.js as a library, and then uh, Firefox. Uh, yeah, the wish list items. Um, I was a little surprised by the APIs, the number that had some kind of documentation about what they did, or were either out of service or no longer supported somewhere and issuing new API keys. So I found a lot of APIs on Google searches that said they did things that I that just weren't supported. Um, so one thing I wanted to find uh, was a, a latitude longitude lookup for all ski resorts in the US. Um, and then based off of those coordinates, find the nearest um, uh, airport code. And we ended up having to uh, pull some of that manually in a CSV file and then convert it to a JSON. 
object. Um, and um, growing support for more resorts and have all the images personalized for all the resorts. Um, and then uh, there was a lot that we could have done with the, the flight API, but it, again, that costs serious money. And uh, monetizing with Skyscanner, you can get or someone else, <laughs> or someone else. But you can um, you get a referral. Uh, uh, you send a referral code. Is that how it works? Then you actually, yeah. So the when you click on the link to the book now, it takes our API key, so it, it knows <clears throat> who's making the referral. And then most importantly, implement a custom test. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that. Yeah, well, there it is. Question. Um, so, uh, um, so what would have been, a, a, if you guys would have had more time, a solution to kind of offset that call as a guy? Obviously, it was like flight working current because it probably wasn't any available at like short notice, whether it was. Um, what could have been a solution to getting an MP or a or getting an MP response? Uh, some kind of, well, if not a better API, something that would tell the user what's going on when they're making that call. Try a different date, kind of thing. Yeah. So, sorry, everybody, vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so and I really like the usage of chart. Uh, and, and, and if you guys try other things like pie charts or some other, did you look at other libraries like that? We did, yeah. Okay. Looked at um, a couple of just kind of data display libraries. Chart awesome. seems um, really well supported, good documentation. Yeah, there's a lot of, if you want to have sometimes a ton of like creative different displays that you could use with that data, but. Uh, All right, guys, big power clap. All right, one more big power clap. All right, guys, uh, so we have two more fantastic projects to get through. Uh, and uh, yeah, so make sure you're filling out your your presentation voting stuff. It's really important, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna use it important internally. We'll we'll do like uh, some sort of bragging rights thing in class or something for the most whatever. So um, what's that? Who takes home pretzels? Who takes home pretzels? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have pretzels and cuties. Go. <laughs> um, I actually have these little gold coins at work. You know, these like little chocolate gold coins. Oh, like, oh that'd be fun to. I don't like it. Um, all right, so uh, let's welcome up the birthday tracker project. So we are the birthday tracker team. Um, we went with birthday tracker uh, instead of birthday stalker. We thought that would give out the wrong <laughs> connotations. <clears throat> Don't be late it is our. That's what they say on the streets. Um, it's the new thing. This is our team. Um, I'm Christian Simmons. I work mostly on the HTML, Sam, JavaScript, Emily, CSS. We kind of divided out our roles at the beginning. Uh, as you can see, our app was very dangerous. To uh, We ran into a lot of trouble around every corner. We were ready around every turn. So uh, 
problem with this one was people forgetting birthdays, not remembering um, the birthdays of their friends, family, or loved ones. And when they are faced with a birthday, uh, coming up with an idea for what to get for a gift. And it was the, uh, so our target audience was anyone who's got a birthday of a close person coming up. Our solution was we wanted to track the birthdays that you enter, set up a reminder um, on through the app as the day approaches. And then when you click on that person's name of whoever's birthday is coming up, it will give you <laughs> gift suggestions based on likes that you entered on your opening page. So, um, like I said, the process was, you know, we, I, I basically started with the HTML. First thing we needed to do was figure out what inputs we needed to make this work. Um, you know, your name, your email, a recipient's name, their birthday, and whatever they're interested in, the likes that they had. We went through APIs uh, to find out what we could use. Uh, Sam, maybe we can jump in and talk a little about that. Yeah, so uh, we were looking at the Amazon API for like the gift ideas and what to pull from Amazon, and that was a little bit difficult to integrate, so we went with eBay instead. And that, for the most part, was somewhat intuitive, except for uh, I had to get like a function to define something from the JSON, which was kind of weird, but I used Google, and somebody had already done it for me, so that was nice. Uh, and then we use, I, I found, a, it's called Mail.js. Uh, and that is sent is used to send the reminders about somebody's birthday, and I'll get more into that when I demo the site. As far as the uh, user interface, we decided to go with Bootstrap. Um, it was what we knew, and uh, we uh, wanted to create something that was friendly, user friendly, and that looked uh, nice. Um, the, on the JS side, we tried to include everything that we have learned so far, you know, from Firebase to Ajax calls, all that. <clears throat> and obviously, we uh, incorporated Firebase because we wanted to be able to give real time updates and have a place where that these names could be saved every time you go to the site. Um, so, for the design process, really, uh, like I said at the beginning, we needed to first come up with our inputs. What did we want to gain from the user? So, we could look at the first page that we kind of made, which was a very <laughs> yeah, that was it. It's cool. Um, but I'll talk about it a little bit right now while she gets it set up. But I, um, so what I decided to do is hard code everything at the beginning. Um, That's not what we wanted. Why is this? We knew uh, eventually what we, we knew what we wanted to generate through JavaScript to the page, um, and what we wanted to uh, you know and what we all the the list of rows that we wanted to generate from JS. But at the beginning, I needed to hard code everything so that we would get an idea of how it would look, and I feel like that was helpful for Sam too because when he was writing the JS. Uh, it gave him an idea. He could look at the HTML and he could figure out, well, this is what I need to generate each time, you know, with a row and with a uh, person's name. Um, so this was like the very first thing I did, you know, was just, you know, a very simple page with all the info that we needed, some buttons, whatever. Then we changed it as we went. You know, started centering things, giving it margin, picked a background, and then it eventually led to the third uh, image we're going to show, which is kind of the finished site. Which, you know, we picked a logo, we picked or we picked a picture, a tagline, and got the buttons. Uh, you know, we added added some you know bells and whistles with you know the buttons raising, and. Um, Giving them shadow, things that you'll see as we as we demo the site. Um, so one of the factors we kind of ran into is I'm already clicking the Okay, 
Okay, so one of the things we kind of ran into as we were working on the project is we'd get to a certain page and be like, oh, how do we get back to this other page that would be handy to have up, you know, as we're working on it, or just if someone were to use it, being locked in this other tab would be kind of frustrating. Um, so to kind of combat that, what we ended up doing is we added these types of buttons, you know, view current birthdays so that you could jump from section to section without having to go through the entire process. So that's one of the components of CSS that um, helped to make the app more usable. For my birthday right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> I was guessing. I was guessing. Um, and then we also, when uh, we show the gift results later, you're also, you'll also be able to see that we added um, other buttons that to kind of implement that as well. And then we really worked to make the design kind of basic so that everyone can use it, um, easy to read, that type of thing. Um, most of the site is mobile responsive as well, so that's another safety factor. Um, yeah, and then I'll go on to the, kind of the demo here for us. All right, so uh, this is essentially the JavaScript in like layman's terms, I suppose. Uh, you have the input forms, which we already showed you guys. They'll enter that stuff in. And then when they hit submit, uh, they will get a registration email or something from the site where it's like, thanks for registering. We'll keep in touch with you. Uh, second step of the site is you can see the entries. You saw Chris Volkov was our first entry there. Uh, and then you could click on view gifts, and I'll show you that page in a second here. Uh, and then uh, you also get an email sent for a reminder if it matches today. So if today is the day you chose to get reminded, you receive a second email then. Uh, and then the third uh, step is the gifts page, which is where we integrate the eBay API. And I'll demo the site for you guys. All right, so I guess we'll be Nate buying a present for Chris. And I'll just guess on the birthday again. Probably get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for demonstration purposes, I'll choose today as the date. Okay. 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 Let's go with fashion. Obviously. He's very obviously. <laughs> <laughs> And that's when it's sending the emails on hit submit. And so now we have a new entry, and that's uh, the new Chris Wolcott that we entered with the new birth date. Uh, so I'm going to check our email, our little demonstration email that we set up. But we should have the registration email as well as the reminder email since today is our reminded date. There we go. We got more than more emails than we wanted, but that's that's fine. <laughs> uh, so here's our automated reminder for birthday tracker that it's time to start talking for Chris Wolcott. Uh, don't forget he likes fashion. <laughs> Please visit our website to get the ideas of the birthday tracker. And then our registration email is before those. So thanks for using birthday tracker. We'll make sure that you won't miss any birthdays going forward. Please visit our website. If you go to the site and you're looking for gift ideas and click on view gifts. Anyway, it's fashion for you guys. Uh, and then uh, that's gonna look really good on Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So these are three gift ideas. And you can just click on make an offer, which will take you to the eBay actual auction. For a woman's tank top, for sure. Um, <laughs> <Nice. laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the site. 
So some of the challenges that we ran into, uh, Git was basically our biggest challenge. Um, we didn't have a lot of problems with the actual design and functionality. Um, it was basically a lot of just trying to figure out how Git worked and um, making sure that we were pulling and pushing. Um, as far as you know, our wish list goes, um, we want to be able to uh, you know create an account where the the birthdays will be stored eventually. Integrate with users with the uh, Google Calendar so that those will just go onto a calendar. That, that would have been something that we would have liked to do. Um, something that also is not on here. Obviously, we, we we chose eBay, and Sam can tell a little more about why that was our choice. But we would like to incorporate with something bigger, at, you know, like an Amazon. Or yeah, something. like Amazon or something, because I feel like most people these days don't like to bid on auctions because then you have to track something, you have to make sure the highest bidder and stuff like that. It's better to just have a one-stop shop where you can just buy an item, like buy and forget, and then you're just kind of done with it. Uh, login system would have been really nice because um, that's more server side, though, and I feel uh, that we're not as comfortable with that right now. Uh, so right now, as far as the email system and getting the reminders, you would theoretically have to have the browser up at all times to get that reminder, uh, which most people practically probably wouldn't do. Um, and uh, I guess right now, the way we're presenting the site is it's kind of like you're already logged in in that sense. Uh, but yeah, creating profiles at some point. And then uh, if we did have the Google Calendar, we could also have their Google account and we could maybe use like that zero off for them to log in, which would be kind of cool. Any, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. So, uh, yeah, a couple things. Uh, first, I've never seen that JS mail before, client side mail before. Yeah, it was How great. Did, what, what it was awesome. So they have like their own dynamic parameters that you can set up, and that's how I was able to pull in like your name as because you're the user. Um, and then it's we got like 200 free emails or something like that. I looked at other services, and they're like you need a credit card. They they didn't require that, so we went with that one. But yeah, it's really intuitive, and they have good uh, documentation. Right. So if going forward, that will be server based. So I mean, obviously, you know, right. Use it. It's, all, it's all client side, so. Literally everything that we're typing right now is available to exactly yeah yeah um, but yeah no that's a really great use of that I, I didn't think that was going to be possible like project one to be able to send the reminder so that's really that's right really great. Um, the uh, other part was what what, what might give you uh, what would be some more options you could say about the user that would help you know, maybe refine that search. Yeah, so we did actually originally have the dislikes uh, column set up, but when we're searching eBay, we didn't really, we were trying to find a way where we can incorporate dislikes, and it kind of was counterintuitive because we're just looking for stuff that they actually like. So maybe we could have, I don't know, maybe an algorithm or something where we could take in the dislikes and be like, if, if it matches this, just don't show it, or something like that. Um, you guys have any ideas? Well, um, oh, so I was going to say, eventually, just like we saw here, we're getting, you know, women's. Tank top. Yeah. I mean, uh, eventually this would be something that, as you know, we go forward, we we could add, uh, you know, the birthday recipient's gender, or you know, just think more specific things that could narrow it down more, so that you're getting some more specific gifts. Maybe like age too. So yeah. They can have age related stuff. Um, you could end up building almost like a profile type of thing for each person that in there, so you have certain fields. Instead of just having the same field term as you just need. Exactly. Um, going, we'll also learn uh, about cron jobs and those kinds of things, like automated processes. Um, so something like this could definitely use like a nightly one, you know, that would do your email sending. Right, and that kind right. Of stuff all the time. Um, very cool. Yeah, awesome. Uh, anybody else any questions? All right, guys, let's welcome up the Pokemon Trail. Don't forget to uh, fill out your forms.
And you're not, if you haven't given enough ones, now's a great time. <laughs> everybody um this is our group who made the pokemon trail uh it is a game um that's oh no i'm actually here <laughs> we decided to make a game just because um we really wanted something that was fun and interactive through boredom um yeah oh i just thought it would be well, that and like Peter has a lot of prior experience with coding, so we wanted something that would be challenging for all of us. And so we were able to incorporate a little bit of like the stuff that we've learned you know, for the new people for the game. And then he was able to really challenge himself by building this game for him. So. Um, so we had some struggles. Basically, across the board, I guess. In GitHub and trying to like communicate and make our changes like as easy to merge as possible. Um, I had some trouble with validating like our user login. I, don't, I had some serious scoping issues. I just like went around and just searched for a while. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I probably ran into a bunch of issues, but nothing. Um, we got over those struggles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. Well, I feel like as a team, we really wow, it's hard to make all of it. Um, <laughs> it looks better on a much bigger. Uh, I feel like as a team, though, we, we were able to really come together and start communicating better and start really like, you know, communicating, hey, like I, I sent a pull request and that you know just communicating as a team um which then really led to some great results um so this is a little bit of i guess the creative process um angela drew everything out on my computer that i made some powerpoint on it's all perfect kind of more about you know the process what are we going to make how are we going to make it what's it going to look like i feel that that was actually one of the things i struggled with was i just kind of started making stuff without having a clear idea of what it was supposed to look like which proved difficult i don't know if you want to talk about the process So this was um, part of the, oh, yeah. that was yeah. This is part of the part that um, I worked on, and I essentially I used um, the API, and I was able to um, make a pull up picture as well as or no, yeah, as well as and I used the Pokemon API, which then pulled like certain car moves or certain you know whatever it is that um, it was following. So that was exciting to get to, uh, to play around with and struggle with. There were struggles, but they were overcome. Anything else you want? Lots of debugging. Scolding is a serious issue. Um, you want to demo? 
the one thing I feel that we could have done better as a group is the coding trees. We're, <laughs> we're kind of like coding up until the last literally last second. So that is probably not such a great thing to do. Um, one thing I learned is. Yeah, we said like way more ideas and more actually time for it. Yeah. Yeah, if we had way more time, it would be awesome. I mean, it is awesome, but it'd be awesome for. <laughs> Because we're like Nothing working up to the last, <laughs> but yeah, basic instructions. Hopefully, that simply contains that uh, charter card and the little kid. <laughs> so, so yeah. for this one, I just uh, I picked the Pokemon that we had available. If we had more time, we had the idea of using the Pokemon API to grab a list of all of the Pokemon, but we didn't have the time to really make that work and you know, tie it all together. So, and also, it doesn't come with images, so we have had. That was like the word on trail, you know, days pass um, to when you have to make it through the entire game with the, within the appropriate amount of days, right? Uh oh. Let's check out the system. Oh, no. There we go. I think I made that happen. Can you talk about the tree generation and stuff? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so just got like a few images of. Trees in a folder, and then um, I would have to like describe the structure of the code to get into it. Uh, it's, the trail is just like a big object, which uh, each location um, also has a list of scene elements, and then those scene elements uh, hold these images up, and then they just kind of place it. In the main div, as you know, and each of them just scrolls slowly across the screen until it reaches the edge, and then once you can't see it anymore, then it disappears. So, and each location will have different types of elements. I probably should have made this thing to look like that thing less often. <laughs> <laughs> this was something I was messing with like, during the break, so. Um, yeah, eventually. Remember the 
Occasionally, a Pokemon will appear in the night. And I imagine that you would like eventually maybe sell it, but we didn't get that far. When I got frustrated with the, the debugging and the porting process, I would just open up this window and just oh, oh. play. Yeah, for the night. <laughs> So we only got three hours till dark, so we better get back. Sunny back. See, we oh, it didn't show. Okay, so that part doesn't actually work. So maybe it does. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Um, check out the fire base here. That's it. My current player, yep, Potty. She has a hop there, and it just says, like, when they hop, basically. Yeah. Um, kind of. That's another thing that we like to do so that you can, like, save the game and resume, or maybe you don't even have to save. Go back in the bar where you left off. Like I said, there was a lot of things that we wanted to add and we just didn't have time. <clears throat> but anyway, that's pretty much our game. Right, I want you guys to see the desert. <laughs> Do you lose numbers? Um, yeah. Yes, yes, they'll die eventually. <laughs> there we go, the desert finally gets up. It's green, but it's got a cacti. Um, it's just CSS actually. Like each of these is a jQuery image. And um, each of these is a jQuery image. And um, in the code here, it, it just does. So it'll do, it tells about 30 frames a second. So it's just a timeout, which calls it a timeout function, which calls itself again when it finishes. And um, doing that, that new Pokemon hop, um, every image on the screen, whatever about the left, the sun does its thing. And this player is actually just a gift that walking no matter what, so we don't have to do anything with that. We got the mountains. Yep, they look a little bit like the mountains. It's hard to get mountains to line up on. There's also a forest of doom. Yeah, that was the first. Always. Yeah. So what are some more things that can happen to you on the plane? I thought it'd be cool. Famine. Famine, yeah. I'm sure locusts probably broken legs. We eventually want to make it so, like, every time you go hunting, so you catch, you know, catch a deer that counts as part of your food. Um, that part works, actually. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so you've got, like, 1,400 food already. Great piece of stuff. Um, and, and, and then eventually we wanted to add, like, a store where you could um, buy supplies, sell supplies. Um, maybe when you catch a Pokemon, instead of just catching it, you have to like fight it. There's a lot we could have done. Well, yeah, a lot could have done. Yeah. Just 
struggle is real. So I like the use of uh, you know, using the animation, but it feels like the one cross and how I think it was meant to be about to be moved the image from the top of the screen. Oh, okay. uh, but sorry, it's going down a bit there. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Uh, yeah. Question? Is there much space in Canvas? Uh, I don't know. Oh. You said, um, yeah, background. Sprites and there being procedural and that kind of thing. Yeah, which just means randomly positioned images. Yeah, All right. well, like within certain parameters, like each scene object has certain parameters that tell it where it should go. Like um, most of them end up on the far side of the road, but occasionally they end up on the near side. So it means it's like you're in the forest. And can you see it next? Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, there's a function that um, orders them correctly, but sets the z index equal to its y position plus uh, z offset parameter expansion. Because like a tree, you want it based on where the roots are, right? Not where the center is, but that's not necessarily true for layer. So um, yeah, everything. That's also happening here. But yeah, it, that structure makes it very easy just to like add another location, add another entry to the object. Create the images, name them the right thing, and then add the entry inside. Add some sort of like a scoring system, obviously, and have it at the top. And, uh, yeah, and how that's I'll show you guys a ton of ideas. Um, yeah. You know, um, add objects, so you can really put it. Yeah, it would be fun to obviously save your static if you can just leave. Um, even for you to have some sort of system and administrative access where you can configure how often you pull it comes up, you know, <laughs> you know, you know in the system, you know, and kind of be able to tweak that. You know, um, yeah. Few creative versions of the game, like this is the heavy Ebola version. <laughs> <laughs> this week, this week we featured. Yeah. We also Three talked players. about um, incorporating the ability for two players to fight each other. So, like, player oh, logged cool. on. Cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, there. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Awesome. Yeah, it's done, guys. Yeah, make sure I fill out your thing. Awesome. Um, okay, guys. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I am like ultra, really, ultra, like crazy impressed with some of those projects, man. This is like really, this is like project two level stuff. We even came to Sam. This is like really advanced stuff we got to put together. So I'm super impressed. Uh, I can't wait to see what is coming up next because. Yeah, you guys done some really cool stuff so far. Um, I was going to mention something, but I forgot what it was. It reminded me of it last project. Um, oh, someone was, what team was it that was limiting the API calls by storing it in the Firebase? So you guys, right? Yeah, I just wanted to draw, draw attention to that. You, you guys were the only group that mentioned that, but like, you know, those API calls can be expensive. You know, so, so storing that locally and go, or storing that in a database. So you don't have to go all the way out to the API to get it. It's a really smart move. So you don't have to, you know, get it. You only get it if you need it. You know, so that's a that's a really good practice to get into. So awesome job thinking that through. Um, cool. Did see some ES6 stuff uh, you guys were doing in there too, which is like another language kind of a, a version on top of JavaScript that we're going to be learning soon. We're doing currently we're doing ES5. We'll be doing the ES6 stuff next. So that's uh, that's going to open up. Things to make our coding a little faster, a little more efficient. Uh, it's going to be really exciting. So, um, Saturday, you guys are starting on Node. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm so bummed because I'm so excited about that class, but Brian's taking on that one. Um, so, like I said, prepare to do all that over again on, on Monday because <laughs> I'm really, really excited about that class. So, um, 
yeah. Uh, otherwise, any questions for me or for any other groups? Yeah. So we just how do we submit our? So submit each person still should submit their their group's project. Um, so use the same link or whatever. Just submit that as as part of your your it's your homework though, right? Yeah. For your assignment, yeah. So you guys would all submit the same URL, um, and that that'll work fine. It's a good question. Uh, anything else, guys? Cool. Well, like I said, uh, I am just astounded. Like I'm literally in shock by how awesome these projects were. <laughs> like really, I expected like maybe one or two groups to like just go up here with a PowerPoint presentation, be like, "This is what we wanted to have happen," <laughs> you know. <laughs> But, uh, but they were all solid, no no, no hangouts, nothing. So um, awesome job. Let's give ourselves all of these on the time. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'll call it early. If you guys want to call it early, let's do it. And uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. All right. Power clap for now. <laughs> oh, submit, submit your uh, forms. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I want some. So, at least on Saturday.